第三位要上场的是 Teacher Linda， 请大家一样热烈先来欢迎。Uh, before I begin, I do want to apologize. My presentation will all be in English also. But Peggy has promised that her presentation will be in Chinese. So, no, I, I, I'm, I'm <laughs> I know um, it's difficult to um, sit and listen to a second language for a lengthy period of time. Also, uh, in the booklet, you do not have my PowerPoint, only an outline. Sorry about that also. Today, I wanted to uh, discuss and hopefully get some input from the Taiwanese English teachers, uh, the three approaches to teaching uh, English as a foreign language in Taiwan. And this is my second year uh, teaching in Taiwan, uh, first year in Miali County but second year teaching on the island, and I have observed three approaches that I think are used in the schools that I have been involved in. And I've seen the communicative approach, uh, grammar translation approach, and then I'm throwing this out there for a debate, but um, I really think um, in Taiwan, English competitions are beginning to be another approach that's being used now uh, to teach English. Um, first of all, I think we need to get to the basic question. Why do the Taiwanese students need to learn English? Why aren't they learning French or Tagalog or some other language? Why, why English? in the world today have listed English as their official language. The United States is not one of them. We have not voted to have English listed as our official language yet. So that does not include um, the United States. Uh, and really, if you do, she's correct, if you do total um, the non-native speakers of English, like all of you Taiwanese teachers are the non-native speakers of English, and then the native speakers of English, it is the most common language spoken in the world today. It's the language of business, it's the language of industry, the language of trade, it's a good reason. Then what um, approach or approaches should, should be used to teach them? Um, just should we focus on one approach, the communicative approach? Should we just do the grammar translation method? Or should we do all English competitions? Um, those are just two examples from 2010 to 2011. Um, I was using the communicative approach in a couple of my classes uh, in Pingdong County. Before I begin on the three approaches, what I'd really like to do is go back to Robert Gagne's Nine Events of Instruction. Um, he was an educational psychologist who did a lot of his work uh, in America in the 1980s. And I think we need to keep his nine events in our minds as we look at the three approaches. Because uh, his, uh, his whole thought press process was in learning outcomes. What do we want the students to produce at the end of the day? Um, he had intentional or purposeful learning in mind. So first it was to gain attention, uh, activate those students' receptors, get them excited about class, like Allison mentioned with the games. Two, inform learners of objectives. A little hard for for us uh, English speakers to tell the students what the lesson and the objective is going to be about, particularly at the elementary level. Uh, 
stimulate recall of prior learning. I think that's very important. Instead of teaching language as a detachment, um, for example, we use a different series other than Darby. It's a Pearson uh, book series. And in um, grade five, we just finished two units on prepositions of direction. This new unit is on zoo animals. So rather than have a disconnect and, okay, now we're going to begin on zoo animals. Uh, I noticed the first page had a picture of the zoo with people visiting the zoo in various locations. So then I made up a worksheet uh, for the students and they had to look at the picture and decide is the, um, are the hippos in the water or out of the water? Are the monkeys on the ground or in the trees? So we're using prepositional directions, we're using the zoo animals, so we're kind of tying it all together. So uh, that's very important. Uh, of course, then the fourth step is you present the new content. Provide learning guidance. Um, this is where you build your scaffolding. Like when a person, when a construction crew builds a building, uh, you have scaffolding for support. This is where you build your support around the new uh, content. That includes all of the ralia, the pictures, that you put up on the walls, uh, the objects that you bring to class to actually show the students uh, what they're getting. Uh, elicit performance. You give the students time to practice that new skill. Whether it's in game format, or teamwork, or pair work, but give them time to practice the new skill. Provide feedback. Uh, we do that um, just as natural professionals. When we teach, we go around the room, or if they're working in teams or table work, we're listening. Uh, we're providing who's got it, who doesn't have it, what common thing did maybe all of the students not get that I need to revisit again. And so, um, it's just informal assessment that we do as professionals. Number eight, we will not always do uh, in a 40 minute class period, that's the testing, the, the formal assessment. And then nine, um, enhance retention, determine if the students can take the English vocabulary and apply it to everyday life situations. Okay, now, Getting back to my three approaches. How well does Robert Gagney's nine events of learning apply to the grammar translation approach? This approach started in about the 1400s, I believe, and it was used to teach Latin and then the Greek language. And basically, it's focus, reading, and writing, Students are learning uh, grammar rules. They're learning isolated English or whatever the target language is, vocabulary. And they're translating from maybe their L1, their first language, into the second language. Or they translate from the second language into their first language. Uh, the emphasis, obviously, is, is reading and writing. There are, um, there are various methodologies we use, and I just listed uh, a few of them. The English village may be considered part of the communicative approach. 
Uh, I've been involved in uh, permanent English villages in Pingdong County. Um, actually wrote the curriculum for one and there, there was a mock home with a kitchen and a dining room and a bedroom and vocabulary was practiced that uh, dealt with the home. And there was an airport. Uh, there was a bus station and a train station and a bank. And vocabulary was developed to enhance that. There's TPRS, uh, teaching proficiency through reading and storytelling. Cooperative learning, which is um, some of your teamwork. It can be think, pair, share. It can be inside, outside circles. Uh, there's lots of different activities with cooperative learning. Project-based learning, which I understand someone is going to speak on at another time. And then um, I listed Reader's Theater. Um, it could be, I think it could belong here. It could belong uh, definitely under the, um, the English competition uh, approach also. Uh, but um, Robert Gagne's nine events of learning. Do we activate the students' receptors when we use some of this? Do we uh, do recall of past learning and tie it into what they're learning? Um, do we do informal assessment? You know, think about how many of those nine things we may include in the communicative approach. Okay. That's just a little bit more. Obviously, you can tell it's one of my favorite approaches. Uh, we make use of real life situations that necessitate communication. Students' motivation comes from their desire to learn to communicate in meaningful ways. Um, just as a side note, this wasn't planned, but one um, sixth grade class we found out it was my co-teacher's birthday. She didn't know that we knew it was her birthday. So they came to class before class started and the English from those sixth grade students flowed. Teacher Linda, this is what we want to do. And they were telling me and we were planning a surprise. And I had planned a game down on the uh, basketball court outside, so at the end of the game, uh, my question was, it was a days of the week game, what day comes after Wednesday? Thursday, what is Thursday? All the students, teacher Tammy's birthday. Then we sang happy birthday in Chinese and then English, and I think we surprised her. But they, uh, communication to them, they were motivated and the English was produced, and we had a fun time with it, so. Um, great emphasis in listening and oral production. So there is not a lot of writing, um, not a lot of grammar uh, in the communicative approach, which is one thing that is lacking. English competitions, um, read alouds, song and dance, reader's theater, uh, Miali has countywide competitions approximately four times a year that um, we foreign English teachers are involved in preparing the students for. Uh, for those of you that might be a little bit unfamiliar, read alouds, uh, one person reads five scripts. These are folk tales and fables. Uh, the language is archaic English, it's not common everyday spoken English, and uh, they're judged on intonation, fluency, pronunciation, not really um, judged on the time there. Uh, to me, English competitions doesn't involve an entire classroom. Reader's theater, as many as 10 students read a script, judged on the same criteria uh, and they are judged and um, for time. Time is important there. 
song and dance involved 20 to 30 students, song and dance uh, memorized. Uh, I know with our third and fourth graders who are involved in song and dance's last competition, they really didn't understand what the words meant. Um, I don't think there was uh, English comprehension. It was not comprehensible input, put it that way. So I think uh, we as English teachers, and I'm speaking both to the Taiwanese teachers and to those of us that um, are teaching here as foreign English teachers, we need to think, is English just a subject listed on the curriculum the students have to learn, they check off and they move on, and that's it? Or is English a skill to be mastered that we want them to use throughout their lifetime? So in thinking about that, I, uh, the Chinese proverb, tell me and I forget, show me and I remember, involve me and I understand. And I now know how to make chrysanthemum tea because we started growing the chrysanthemums, watering them, picking them, drying them, I was involved in the process. Um, so that's just an example at, um, that was Zhou Hu Bo Xiao. And uh, so there are some of our Taiwanese children. How do we teach them English? Uh, Any questions? 